Welcome to another edition of the Digital Sports Show right here on islandstats.com. I'm your host, Earl Beeson, and joining me yet again is Jason Juggin J. Ford. J. on Monday afternoon or midday Monday, um, what would we consider a revelation um, released uh, by Andrew Bascom and David. Um, for a number of years, we've heard David talk about his challenges. And that's one that has not gone unnoticed by myself, um, but finally Andrew has um, gotten it off his chest. Um, challenging times, um, but there are still other people going through what what has now come to light. Um, your thoughts on on Andrew and David, as well as how do you feel about where it should go from here? Well, first. Thing, you know, the first word that comes to my mind is courage. Mm -hmm. um, it's been 30 years plus. And to just hold something in that devastating to you uh, as a teenager and not have the courage to think that people's going to have your back, believe you, and do something about it. Mm -hmm. um, that's the first thing. And I know many other people that have been victimized have gone through that same scenario. The belief, mm -hmm. especially if it's a person who's a well-known person, mm -hmm. who's a well-liked person, normally in sports, it could be a great player, a great coach, a great administrator mm -hmm. that everybody likes. And this is how they able to be a predator. Right. And that's basically what it is. They are proud of. Mm -hmm. After hearing the report about in England mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, right. me Sir Deal made mention of it. And if we all are to be honest with ourselves, or we've all heard it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From East to West. Right. We've all heard it. But that taboo that subject's been taboo. Yeah. For many of us, for years. So we've heard the rumblings, we've heard the pockets, we've heard who the perpetrators are in some sort, but we have no evidence. Right. But in the in the pockets you hear it. But growing up in the sixties and the seventies and the eighties, that was taboo. Mm -hmm. Not just in sports, but you, you saw you heard it in the Cub Scouts mm -hmm. throughout the years. You heard it in other organizations throughout the years. Right. We're seen across the world and gymnastics and all these other sports yeah. throughout the years. So it's not just football, but because of the, once again, probably lack of courage right. that the victims have at the time. Or the, 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 the fear of support. The fear of support. Mm -hmm. to, to, to speak of. So when you get a player, coach, a legend, mm -hmm like Andrew speak out on it. Now it really makes you sit up and pay attention. Mm -hmm. But it also makes some of us feel guilty. Yeah, it would. It would knowing that everything or some of the things you heard back in the day was true, but you said it earlier, proving it. Mm -hmm. for, for when you hear things, mm -hmm. you, you tend to listen, but you have to be able to, if you're going to make that without facts, mm -hmm. it's it makes, yeah, it makes it difficult. It's and as you said, back in those days, people were not going to come out without facts. They weren't going to say, and then the other side was, some people cap it in because it was either family or somebody they really, really knew or some outstanding person in the community. Mm -hmm. So it becomes that person tends to hold back so much and still to probably today, we still have those people that are afraid because they may be someone popular in the community. They may be someone who's a leader of the country in many different organizations and so forth. Mm -hmm. You have some sports or some organizations that are afraid now because it will tarnish their their sport name or their organization name. Mm -hmm. But see this yesterday I, I, I mentioned something that if if we have people that have proof Mm -hmm. and say nothing, mm -hmm. then do you still want that person 
or those people around that sport or that organization because why would you why would why would you go to someone else and not go to the police with the facts you have you're 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 saying right now that you would rather tell anyone but the authorities that another coach or another somebody you know is interfering with a kid with a kid and that that you would want that person to because to be honest that person is just as bad as the predator because he or she is allowing the predator to do whatever they want manipulate a young person without getting the authorities involved when parents drop off their kids mm -hmm. to these programs mm -hmm. after school programs whatever programs it is mm -hmm. extracurricular programs right they put the utmost trust in you to secure the child's welfare. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's the, the bottom line is that trust. You have to treat that child mm -hmm. and secure that child as if it was your own. Because mm -hmm. you would expect the same thing if you drop your child off somewhere. Right. So I, I'm definitely on with you. Um, I think now and, and Hopefully, you know, we have more people who have the courage after hearing this story. Because mm -hmm. now they can put a picture to it. And I, and I don't want to relate the story to the Magic Johnson story. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But I'll relate it to the fact of the taboo. Right. When Magic Johnson was diagnosed with HIV, mm -hmm. at the time, the HIV and AIDS was taboo. Right. Nobody wants to speak about it. Mm -hmm. It's going to tarnish our name, especially the Lakers, you know, right. legacy, right. endorsements, the whole nine. Um, they used to start worrying about his sexual orientation right. because we wasn't, we didn't have the knowledge about the disease at the time. Right. But look what he's done. He became the face and name of it. Yeah. yeah. And took the Lakers with him. Yeah. Yeah. And they became the forefront of that and the fact that you, you you it's not a life sentence disease yeah. it's not it's not because a lot of people were not getting the treatment that was needed right. yeah. um they caught they sort of their bodies would then you know but when he came out and said you know what i've contracted it i've contracted it and um you know what this is what i need to do they, this is what i done this is what ABC. They, they put money and resources for testing. And mm -hmm. So we'll get back to it, back to home. We talked about another sports and evening of cricket now with, with the psychologists coming into the mm -hmm. coaching staff nowadays. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's not just all physical. Sometimes a lot of these games, we, we talk about a lot of times, it's 90% mental. Yeah. But sometimes we have some things in our closet that needs to get cleaned up. Mm -hmm. So I hope number one, the victims get the support. Yeah, which that's, is important. That's the main thing. Mm -hmm. Get the support. Mm -hmm. Because coming out and then having no support, that's not gonna be good that's not gonna be a good situation. Yeah, there's there's no winners of this. And, right. and let's 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 get this right. There is no winners of this. Mm -hmm. Right. But we can only go forward and hope the only winners that we can possibly see is future kids down the road. Right. That they're not being interested. And we can prevent them from we can try to prevent yeah, them. Yeah. Give them maybe some signs, maybe some signals. Mm -hmm. Obviously, within the last few years, the PFA and most of these clubs now have a vetting yeah. with coaches. Mm -hmm. so, so, so they've acknowledged that it, it has happened. Right. I'm going forward, but I almost hate to say we probably need to see somebody be prosecuted. Mm. You know, because yeah. we do have people going to the. But then, you know, that starts getting into the, um, you know, <laughs> I hate to say this here, but, you know, the, the legal side of where you can't name the person. Right, right, right. Which, in this case, it probably doesn't help. Right, right. You know? Um, as far as Andrew, I'm pretty sure today he could probably say he's a bit relieved. Yeah. Wait till, you know, the stress. The stress of carrying around something um, and to be honest, during that, that press conference on Monday, 
um, when when he broke down and when when the press conference when he got back up to speak when I asked him a few questions you can see a different look on the face the the even even the words got louder and stronger it was like you know what now it's out it's no. over um, I, I can now talk to now now when I when I speak about certain things I don't have to hide certain things I, I, I can't dance around it I, I'm now straight because everyone knows what I've been holding in see he mentioned something in that, in that press conference and it's self worth mm -hmm. and when kids are victimized for whatever reason they lose that yeah they lose that and we've seen that throughout the world lead to suicide mm -hmm. No, you can see that now. And he mentioned about that growing up, didn't feel that he was right. Right. But he leaned on the football, even though that got him sort of in the atmosphere. Right. But he leaned on that that was his way out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he wants to leave this game without acknowledging right. and, and, and securing the safety of these kids that he's, he, he's brought through many kids mm -hmm. now. And, 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 you know, just to slide off the subject a bit, just look at his his nephew. Mm -hmm. About to get signed right. with Bristol City. Well, potentially he's getting signed with Bristol City. Right. So there's been many people that's come through rather than just not even actually playing for Village or playing for Andrew at a team, mm -hmm. but going down Bernard's Park. Yeah. <laughs> Where it started for some <laughs> and many. <laughs> for many. Yeah. Going at Delwood, before they used to be at Delwood mm -hmm. every day. Going down the desert, but for years Andrew was going up, just going down there. They all want to come down and kick, kick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just heard number one, like I said, that the victims will have the courage. Number two, we support them, mm -hmm. and let's be fair. This guy has to be based on facts. Yeah, has to be based on facts because mm -hmm. we can't just prosecute anybody and just everybody. Right. But also now, we come together and try to prevent it happening again. Mm -hmm. And that's the hope um, that this has now brought to the forefront, that mm -hmm. prevention can be, just like, just like anything else, we're never going to stop it 100%. No. Although that's the aim and the goal, mm -hmm. it's, the, it's, given, it's given people signs, both the victim and the people around them, mm -hmm. of what's going on. Is, has, this, has this person's... Um, has something changed with this person? Has their schoolwork dropped off? Has their training dropped off? Mm -hmm. Are they moody? Are they? Mm -hmm. Those are signs that 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 um, scars would give you, mm -hmm. and a lot of these organizations would give you that something is going wrong. This child uh, is holding back something, and something we need to open them up to. And and then, then again, it's that trust factor. Also, I want to add also, but it also gives the victim. A ray of light, mm -hmm. because if you see what David and Andrew have done with their careers, mm -hmm. carrying this burden, right? Yeah. You know, because sometimes, like I said, it, it becomes a self worth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm not going to amount to anything, mm -hmm. and self esteem goes, and everything right. is gone. Right. But here you have two gentlemen now, brothers, mm -hmm. who, if anybody would have said this is where their life would have been. 40, 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for folks who may not know, David had a speech impediment. Yeah. But he speaks about that all the time. All the time. He speaks, he speaks about, about it all the time. Yeah. But he had to overcome that. Overcome that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? And, and now he's a public speaker. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, so these stories, and, and we talked about this many times, even with Mr. Bass. Sometimes we find our best jewels, our best assets, mm -hmm. right here. In the train. Right here, underneath our noses. And sometimes we just gotta, you know, look underneath our noses because that's where our gold is. Mm -hmm. That's where our best assets are. That's where our diamonds are. Might need a little polish, right? But that's where they are. Yeah. And we so. For many you know years, we overlook these things and, and, and shy them away because, like I said, it's been taboo. Right. right. So, hopefully now that 
we can we can give some type of exposure to. And once again, I hope they get this for But we'll be back with more Digital Sports Show right after this message from our sponsor. Bermuda, listen up. D Music is here exclusively for Digicel customers. Open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free. With D Music, you can easily search for your favorite artists and create playlists to fit your lifestyle. Plus, you have the option to download music to your device so you can find a song for any moment, even when offline. D Music comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in store or online to see how you can get D Music today. Well, Jay, Bermuda have been successful in winning the bid to host the World Triathlon Championships in 2020 right here in Bermuda. Um, the triathlon world has now blessed us with, the, with, <laughs> with this championship. Um, one of the things now for the organizations involved, especially the Bermuda Triathlon Association, is to get public support, get the public on board with what needs to be done over the three years. Don't make the mistake of past big events where you only give the public certain information, a little bit of information, and then you want buy-in when you think it's right. Let them know ahead of time what the challenges are going to be, mm -hmm. what obstacles are in front of you, mm -hmm. how can they assist, mm -hmm. how can they be a part, mm -hmm. and how we can all make it successful. So. Well, um, first off, congratulations and big shout out to the committee mm -hmm. who's put that forward. Because obviously you got to have the vision. It starts with the vision. Mm -hmm then coming up with a plan and trying to execute the plan and that's with any sport we talk about so we gotta get hats off to that regarding the preparation i think if they look at the template of the america's cup two years up three years up we've been hearing what's been going on mm -hmm. feeding stuff to the public every month, every two months, mm -hmm. doing different things, trying to draw people in. Even with all the resistance, you're starting to see some of the resistance ease up now mm -hmm. because more information is coming out. Right. So I think that speaks to what you're basically what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had other major events, sporting events, rather it's been the PGA, right. rather it's been International Race Weekend, and all the, and the rest of them, even the rugby, mm -hmm. even soccer, obviously, and the cricket. But now you've seen the template because once again this is the world right the world's watching mm -hmm. right. so we're going to have the world media here and we have to literally put on a show without a doubt so like any show like any broadway play like it we have to have rehearsals yes <laughs> we have to have a script <laughs> we have to have scene one scene two scene three the beginning the middle of the end and I think if we use those templates, and like I said, once again, with the, the experience now we're seeing around the America's Cup. And I would even say, to be honest with you, hopefully one or two of them go and volunteer for the America's Cup. Because mm -hmm. you get to see the inner workings. Many years ago, I had the privilege of going to an NBA All-Star match, uh, I mean game, mm -hmm. two of them actually. When Charlotte first opened the arena and Orlando first opened the arena. Mm -hmm. And I was able to do that because I was a great friend of the guy who's the PR of the NBA. Right. So I'm there first thing in the morning. But Earl Basin, there's a timeline for every From day. 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 12 a.m. Mm -hmm. Not 12 p.m. Right. <laughs> 12 a.m. From what time the players arrive, what time they get something to eat, what time they get the pictures taken, what time they come meet and greet, what time they warm up, break right down to what time you practice for the, uh, the national anthem, mm -hmm. what time they bring the piano up, what time the mics need to be off. Everything that comes and in every department will get almost a ticket, almost a ticker tape mm -hmm. <laughs> of information right. that gets spewed out and it gets directed to each area. And I'm sitting back, I said, this is what happens for one game that's all in a bit. That's right. That's how they're able to pull it off. The game's actually so short. Mm -hmm. Preparations alone and a lot. 
and the amount, the amount of meetings they have prior. So when they do get to the venue, mm -hmm. it's clockwork. Right. So that gave me an appreciation of big events and what it means to prepare. Mm -hmm. We fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining all of us today where I have some very exciting news to share with the people of Bermuda. We found out this week that Bermuda has been chosen to host not one, not two, but three International Triathlon Union World Series events in April 2018, 2019, and 2020. This is a first for Bermuda and a huge win for all of us. These World Series events bring with them 1,200 competitors for each event, which includes 150 elite athletes, not to mention their friends, family members, and supporters. You will recall the fanfare around the arrival of the Louis Vuitton America's World Cup Series in October 2015. And I think it caught many of us off guard just how much of a buzz was generated. I don't think we fully realized until it got here just what to expect. And I would say it far surpassed people's expectations. I think we felt the excitement that was in the air. It impacted our businesses, our economy, our tourism, and afforded opportunities to entrepreneurs testing their wings before the big event in 2017. And it was, of course, exhilarating to watch that in our backyard. Picture that for three consecutive years, and that is what we have just won, except in the world of triathlons instead of sailing this time. These week-long World Series triathlon events will be broadcast around the globe, including the United States, where NBC Sports is the broadcast partner. This will ensure coverage of Bermuda on televisions around the world. The proposed courses for the triathlon will highlight Bermuda's natural beauty on both land and sea. From a tourism perspective, April is a month where we have room for growth. So these events will offer a huge boost for the island in that month and will result in significant visitor spending on island. Put simply, this is the biggest event Bermuda has landed since the America's Cup. This will take Bermuda to the next level of sports tourism. as a wonderful way to follow in the wake of the America's Cup next year. But what makes the icing on the cake is that we'll be able to watch our very own Flora Duffy, the ITU World Triathlon Champion, compete here in her homeland. I look forward, and as I'm sure all of you, in cheering her every step of the way. Woo! <laughs> Flora is a wonderful ambassador, as we saw in Madrid, for telling Bermuda's story as a perfect destination for athletes and adventure travelers. Getting to this point has been a cross-ministry partnership between the ministries of tourism, transport and municipalities, economic development, and social development and sports, who all assisted in preparing Bermuda's bids for these events. So I want to thank all of those involved for making this possible. It's taken a lot of hard work from the team, but we got here. And the view looks pretty good from where I'm standing. To Pat Philip Fairn and Philip Schmidt, Philip is on the phone. I want to say thank you. It was a pleasure working with both of you in Madrid as we submitted our final bid for the 2020 Triathlon Union World Grand Final. While we did not win the 2020 final, we learned a lot from the bidding process. And taking part in such an event has solidified Bermuda as part of the ITU family. I can also announce today that we will be bidding for the Grand Final in 2021 taking on board what we have learned from our most recent bidding experience. Bermuda's blessings of a temperate climate, seaside beauty, and iconic geographic location have certainly made us, in our view, a coveted playing field for some of the world's greatest contests. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Pat, I think you have some words as well. Thank you. Minister, thanks. And we'll get him back to the podium here to answer questions in a couple minutes. But uh, we have our, our own hometown gal on the phone, Flora Duffy, who is uh, uh, going to make some comments here. And uh, Flora, first of all, thank you so much for what you did for us in Madrid. I honestly believe, but for Flora, we may not have won 
this bid. She is the sweetheart to the entire uh, triathlon world, and we're just excited to have you as part of our bid team and glad to have you uh, joining us on the phone. I think Flora from Denver, where it may be snowing a little bit, but uh, oh, from Boulder. I'm sure it's snowing in Boulder, but it's uh, quite beautiful here today, Flora. So welcome to the news conference. You have a room full of uh, media and supporters, so please, it's all over to you, Flora. And how's it going to feel to uh, to actually be back in your uh, in your home country competing in front of the hometown fans? Hi, uh, thank you for having me on. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be incredible. You know, I grew up. Um, watching the race that Bermuda hosted in the 90s, the ITU World Cup, and, you know, watching that, seeing everyone race firsthand just inspired me to, you know, to be a professional triathlete and for it to come full circle and me to be racing on the, the roads of Bermuda in a couple years' time is just, yeah, it's really incredible. You know, I did the Front Street Mile every year as a kid, and now I'm going to be running on it as a professional, as a multiple world champion. Um, yeah, so I really hope Bermuda gets behind it. I'm excited to race in front of my friends and family. And, yeah, I think it's just going to be an absolute blast. Uh, let's have Pat Philip Farron uh, come forward and talk a little bit about sports tourism and, and the things that Bermuda is working on right now to improve our position in that very important economic space for us. Pat, and congratulations on the bid, by the way. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. In just three years, Bermuda has transformed from an emerging sports tourism destination to a preeminent sports tourism destination. This successful bid for three years of World Triathlon Series events is one big part of a much bigger whole when it comes to sports and adventure tourism. Let's take 2017 as one example, which will be a huge year for the island, easily the biggest in Bermuda's history as a sports destination. Already, we have 27 sports tourism events on the 2017 calendar, and that's just in the first six months alone. One of those events is, of course, the 35th America's Cup, five weeks of sailing activities ex excitement and excitement that will solidify Bermuda's position as the sailing capital of the Atlantic. Of the $800,000 in investments that the BTA will make to support ideas of local event planners and entre entrepreneurs next year, at least 30 of those visitor experiences are in the sports and adventure category. And sports training is an area where we've seen an explosion of demand, particularly among high school and college athletes. And college athletes. We expect that demand to grow even more next year. A couple of weeks from now, we'll welcome 100 visiting swimmers who will train at the National Sports Center Aquatics Facility. There's similar demand among other sports, including lacrosse, rugby, track, and golf. Without question, these advances are exceptionally important because we're attracting younger visitors to Bermuda, which is critical to the sustainability of the country's tourism industry. And we're growing business in the shoulder season, a period when we need high volumes of travelers to keep those working in the tourism industry on the job year round. So three years of international triathlon events in April is consistent with the BTA's overall sports tourism strategy. And it's consistent with the objectives of the National Tourism Plan. Today, I hope the tourism community and the country in general are proud of the progress we've made in sports tourism and, more importantly, I hope they're ex as excited as we are to go next, as <laughs> I hope they're excited about where we go next as a truly world-class destination for sports and adventure travel. Thank you. Aaron Smith, um, please, uh, if you would, join us at the podium. Uh, Aaron is representing uh, the Bermuda Triathlon Association, the other BTA, by the way, and <laughs> he, he likes to tell me that. Um, but they played a very important role and will play a very important role in the staging of the event. So, Aaron, thanks for being with us and thanks for the help in Madrid also. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you, Bill. And thank you, everyone. Good morning. Uh, just really to say that on behalf of um, the Bermuda Triathlon Association, we are absolutely thrilled to be a part of um, what we know will develop into the largest focus on triathlon that Bermuda's ever had an opportunity to see. 
Um, what we really see this WTS, World Triathlon Series, uh, series of three events doing is not only exposing, you know, the world to Bermuda, but, uh, and, and the world, by the world of ITU, International Triathlon, to Bermuda. But it will also obviously expose Bermudians more to what triathlon is and what triathlon is about. And that's something as a local, uh, as a local national federation that we're very uh, keen to have happen. Events like this tend to um, provide investment and opportunities for not just athletic development, athlete development, but for coaching development, officials, and um, other areas that really will, will bolster, I think, our local product and make us uh, even more than what Floor has been able to accomplish, uh, hopefully, um, make us not just, uh, you know, uh, known as, as champions uh, at, at one level, but as an entire country of champions. So. We're looking forward to participating and to supporting it, and um, thank you very much. Uh, if I could add one more last thing, and I, actually it was, I just thought of it. Um, it was a little, it was, it was disconnected from this, but we are actually going to be hosting in April. We had, we had applied for, outside of this, this bidding structure, uh, Continental Cup Triathlon, which is maybe considered more like a minor league, um, you know, a league of, of triathlon. It's still elite athletes. and. Based on the events of the last 24 hours here, we're going to try and see if we can work a lot closer with uh, the BTA here and, um, and the ITU to see if we can't actually make that event perhaps a bit of a precursor to what's to come in 2018 and 19. So the same, it's the same time frame, it's April, yeah. and uh, therefore just a great opportunity for us to try and test the waters with that event. So stay tuned. How soon will the sporting side uh, information about race route, times, and all that. How soon will that, because that had to be part of your presentation, so how soon will that be out for the public? Yes, very shortly, and I think we can probably get that information out today, I would expect, um, because it's certainly not something that's hidden. Um, the route uh, would start through with the swimming uh, on Front Street, um, coming right ashore near the ferry terminal, uh, and the cycling uh, parking, if I recall, is up at City Hall. Uh, and then you have the cycling route that basically goes all the way along uh, North Shore and loops back around. So, of course, I mean, the pieces that go with that, of course, is getting people to understand about road closures and those kinds of things, which, of course, you know, people would have on their mind. But the BTA and, and the ministries have um, already been thinking about how we go about doing that. And I think we'll get very local, go into the neighborhoods and explain what this is all about and really talk to uh, individuals that can future plan for a bit of disruption um, while these races are going on. But overall, um, it should be minimal given the times that uh, these things would be happening. So um, we can get that out today. Yeah. Yes, I can. Um, perhaps I should add to the schedule that um, it's a Friday and Saturday schedule. We've deliberately avoided the Sunday morning drives. Phil, you're, you're very instrumental in this coming. What, made, what gave you the idea to approach this in this manner? Um, so the idea came purely from being very close to the sport and, and following the sport that um, is, is close to my heart. And um, when the, the bid process was opened by the ITU, which uh, I was notified of um, in the summer, then I thought this would be a great event to have on the island um, following the America's Cup and, and building on the legacy that we, that we have from the island there. Um, so I um, approached um, all the stakeholders you have in the room with initially the Bermuda Triathlon Association, um, then the, the BCA and eventually the government all being very enthusiastic and, and coming on board and I've enjoyed great support from um, a number of uh, members of the government, um, Mr. Grant Gibbons has also been involved and, and Premier Mike Dunkley um, have, have all been uh, very supportive of, of this bit. So. Um, it's been it's been a real uh, positive experience from my side and, and getting the support from all the stakeholders. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Bill, Phil Schmidt was the bid committee chairman for this process, so he was instrumental in, in helping us win this bid. Flora, you come back every year and compete just in the uh, in Tokyo, um, more so than anything else, just competing along Front Street. Now getting a chance to do island-wide, does that excite you? Yeah, I mean, of course, it's it really exciting. I mean, just to have such a big, uh, huge event in Bermuda, um, you know, and I, I mean, I've seen the course, and I know, I hope I can say this, that 
we'll be using course True Hill. So I'm pretty excited to, you know, to ride up that and never actually get to because it's it's one way. Uh, so yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be. It's just really cool. I mean, for me, it's it's it'll be a very special moment in my career, especially in 2020. You know, it'll be one of the key races in the build to the Tokyo Olympics, and um, yeah, it just. Yeah, it's really, really special. I'm so thankful and grateful that um, you know, Phil had this idea and everyone at Bermuda has been so supportive. It's, it's really special. Now, you train with some top triathletes around the world. What, is the, uh, what do you expect them to be telling you about coming to Bermuda over the next three-year period? Oh, I think they'll be so excited. You know, I often post photos on my Instagram account from when I'm at home in Bermuda, and of course they're always these beautiful pictures and they're always commenting like, oh my gosh, like, you're so lucky for you live in a little paradise. And uh, so I think everyone is going to be so intrigued and excited to, to race here in Bermuda on our, on our roads and our beautiful water. Um, you know, it's such a unique place. Um, and I think, you know, given the amount of years I've raced on the, the world circuit, you know, a lot of people do know about Bermuda and, but don't, don't know that much. They know it's a pretty place, but I think once they get, Super V Dad and you know, do the course and meet all the people. It's just they're really, really gonna enjoy it. Why you on your way? Aaron, it must be special for you, um, your family, um, yeah. and obviously the Hoys, because uh, in the at that point in time, two years, three years time, you've got the likes of Erica and Tyler who are abroad right now in, in actual schools. Of work playing the trade for family that that can possibly this can possibly be their bloom mm. if you will um how is that setting you up for the excitement part family wise oh definitely uh that is an exciting element around this and i can tell you that tyler uh is thrilled to and, and excited to hear about what these developments are he um he's as you noted and and erica who are i guess bermuda's top juniors currently they're both 18. um you know, I think of Flora when she was that age. She competed in her first um, in her first Commonwealth Games, and that's also that's also next year in 2018. Yeah. So perfect timing for consideration, and to be able to have um, world class events at home gives an opportunity that uh, even Flora didn't didn't have at, at that young age. So uh, tr tremendous. Um, I do like to remind people that. Uh, I did compete in triathlon back in the day too, and, and actually did a world did a world uh, championship once. So um, you probably get the the good thing about triathlon is it does does touch all ages. And these events, although the WTS will be the focus for the next three years, we are going to make sure that there are what we call you know public way and citizens waves around them, not just for Bermudians who we want to participate, but given our proximity to the Northeast. I can guarantee you we're going to be Aaron, pulling even in. Old guys can, uh, even old guys are going to be able to participate. <laughs> Bill was a triathlete too. Uh, so you'll, you'll see a lot of people participating. And when you get the ability to race on the course that the professionals race on or similar type of courses, um, that's, that's something that uh, most people just love to take advantage of. Open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free with D-Music, exclusively from Digicel. With D-Music, you can stream and download songs and create playlists of your favorite artists to fit your lifestyle. Whether you're working out at the gym, getting ready for a Friday night, or just chilling at home, D-Music comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in-store or online to see how you can get D-Music today. OJ. On, on Tuesday, we brought you Elon Daly. Well, today we're bringing you Ethan and Elijah, both of them setting records, jumping into the pool in Canada, doing tremendous things. And again, just like their sister, Canada's time to take note of what's going on. Yeah, we, we well, first things first, Earl, we mentioned about the dailies about a month ago mm -hmm. on the program. And since then, I've tried to keep my eye on them also. <laughs> Because when you when you come to me with these new names, I was like, oh, how old are they? Twelve. I was like, hey, these are kids, kids. Mm -hmm. But you start, you know, you start doing your research and, going, and looking at them. So you know what? They they have got some talent. Mm -hmm. No, I'm an amateur. Right. Slash dummy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say right there. <laughs> but if I go see 
that there is some talent there. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if a professional eye sees. Yeah. Yeah. So in saying that, it might be hard, once again, if we were to lose mm -hmm. them to Canada, but I'm not naive about the situation. Right. 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 Because the opportunities would be far greater than what we can ever offer them right, right now. Right. At this age. Without a doubt. Yeah. It's far greater. Mm -hmm. And that's no knock on our swimming organizations here. But the facilities, the competitions, you name it, it it's there for them. Right. Uh, and I would even probably even encourage mm -hmm. it. It'll be, to be honest with you, it'll probably be one of the hard decisions for the parents. Yeah. Because at this age, it comes down to the parents. Mm -hmm. It's not even up to them, but at this age, it's to the parents. Right. To the parents. I think that's got to be, be the biggest challenge. What do you do if your son is at that position? Yeah. Well, you have to weigh those options. What what can get oh, them... Daughter. Yeah, yeah right. what can get them the best opportunity to be the best at whatever they're good at? Yeah. And right now, the unfortunate thing is the challenge that they have in, in Canada. But when I say the challenge, I'm talking about the day-to-day -day training, the day-to-day -day competition. Every day they jump in the pool, they're pushed. Not by, not by just the people they know, because what happens in Bermuda is that every week I swim against you, or I run against you, or I play football against you, and we get to know each other. So next year, oh, that's just Jay, I beat him all the time. So you don't put that effort in, you don't put that, there's nothing to drive me anymore. But in Canada, which is very wide, you might only swim against this top person in the region, Providence, yeah. right, and then you move to another one and you're going against someone even better or stronger in another discipline and so forth. So the, the different challenge you get on a regular basis allows you to want to get better, want to be stronger and want to be the best. So actually, let's see how Ethan and Elijah made out over in Canada. Ethan Daly recently competed at the Central Region Large Team Championships in Canada. Daly broke a nine-year-old record when he clocked a time of 2.12.10 during the 15-16 boys 200-meter IM, breaking Jason Mastelier's November 30, 2007 record time of 2.16.01 set in Quebec. Daly clocked a 400-meter freestyle time of 4.16.28. He also clocked a time of 1.02.54 during the 100-meter backstroke. Daly's time of 29.29 saw him just miss out on the record and then he concluded competing in the 200 meter freestyle, stopping the clock in 158.90. And just to complete the Daly family's performances, we now bring you Elijah Daly's performance. Daly had 8 swims and broke 8 records in the 9 to 10 boys division. Daly clocked a record breaking time of 501.87, breaking his own record of 505.80 set on November 5th of this year in the IM. Daly, back on June 19th, set the 100 meter freestyle record time of 107.16, which he broke touching the wall in a time of 105.75. Daly broke his own 200 meter IM record time of 245.44, set back on June 19th when he was clocked at 242.20. Daly then broke his own 100 meter backstroke record time of 115.67, which he set on June 18th. He stopped the clock this time in 113.41. Daly broke the 50 meter butterfly record he set back on December 15th, 2015, of 35.47, when he clocked the time of 32.64. Daly also recorded a record breaking performance in the 100 meter butterfly when he was clocked at 112.18 breaking the record he set on November 6th of 114.26. Daly went under 30 seconds in the 50 meter freestyle, breaking his previous record of 30.47. He set back on June 16th, clocking 29.87. In the 100 meter individual medley, Daly clocked a record breaking time of 117.09, breaking his own record of 120.10, set back on December 15th, 2015. Well, Jay, in Bermuda, it's the off-season for cricket, but one of our Son of the Soils, Dalry Rollins, is over in Dubai working with the England Lions under-19 team. They played the first game against UAE's under-23s. Uh, 
although he talking with him um, on Tuesday, he was saying that the figures in the bowling don't really show how well he was bowling. A um, little disappointed with the numbers, but it is what it is. Nine overs, none for 45. 28 not out. And they're too in to, to steal the team with a victory. Yeah. I think that's, you know, as a batsman, I don't care if you make two not out, mm. but to bring the team home, yeah. it's always a great feeling. Yeah. Yeah. One thing about his bowling figures, and, and if you look at the uh, over to over, he built pretty tidy, but when you have the one or two overs, <laughs> And he's been in that the death. So, right. Yeah. And, and you get somebody who's swiping or get inside edge runs mm -hmm. down for four or whatever. Mm -hmm. You could rack up 12 runs in that over. Right. And basically over three good balls. Right. Right. So you look at 12 runs, take away from that, you know, you, you start, you, you, you got pretty good figures. Right. But we just talked about it earlier. It's the opportunity that he's getting to play in Dubai mm -hmm. during the off season that we have here. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's, he's in for a spot for the England Winter Tour. So um, this is something that I know uh, mom and dad yes, grinning from yes, ear to ear. Yes, yes. And you know what? For the most part, so should the cricketing community oh, we are in Bermuda. Bermuda. We are because too. it's an opportunity. We see, if you look at um, the last test match, England and India, mm -hmm. their opener, young 23-year-old, yeah. born in South Africa, yeah. played on the 19 cricket for South Africa got the opportunity to move to England and there well, he is. Well, so I'm glad you said that because we we'll are be talking about young players being scouted by other nations. Mm -hmm. And just in the cricketing world, I can remember probably you know, it had to be late 80s, maybe early 90s. Mm -hmm. Graham Hick. Yes. Was a prominent batsman. Mm -hmm. Probably one of the best batsmen in the world at the time. Right. Was in South Africa mm -hmm. and made his way to England. Scoreboard. Now, his English career never really got to the right. heights of the South African. Right. right. Kevin Peterson. Yeah, another one. <laughs> you can go down the list. We can go down the list for England, mm -hmm. right? Even some of the bowlers that came from the West Indies. Yeah. Be Devin Malcolm, Devin and, Malcolm and a few others. Mm -hmm. So, in saying that, Devin is small. It's Kevin, yeah. Yeah. So, in saying that, this is nothing that is just just coming about right but when you have the opportunity and then you're willing to sacrifice and I think that's the main thing I think sometimes we overlook the sacrifice that the Rodden's family not just Dowry mm -hmm. but the family have made for Dowry to take advantage of these opportunities right. and we're going to probably see the same thing with Kamal Leverand yeah. right? I believe this week or uh, next week with the tournament in the uh, the West Indies yeah. yeah. next up. month Next month, month, yeah. yeah. So the opportunity is there for him. Um, he'll be on show. He'll be on show. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let's see how Dowry made out in Dubai. Dowry Rollins played a strong hand in the England Young Lions victory on Tuesday as they claimed a comfortable win in their second match of the training camp in Dubai. Batting under the floodlights, the Young Lions slipped into early trouble, chasing 231. They were 42 for four when Ian. Woods, an 18-year-old member of the Surrey Academy, responded with an unbeaten 117 from 115 bowls that included 13 fours and a six. He was given good support in a fifth wicket stand of 102 with George Bartlett, who scored 44 after earlier taking two wickets from five overs. Rollins, the left-arm spin all-rounder, who recently penned his first professional contract, joined Woods in an unbroken 7th wicket stand of 79 to steer the Young Lions home with almost 9 overs to spare. Rollins scored 28 not out after returning figures of 9 overs, 45 without a wicket. Bermuda, listen up. D Music is here exclusively for Digicel customers. Open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free. With DMusic, you can easily search for your favorite artists and create playlists to fit your lifestyle. Plus, you have the option to download music to your device so you can find a song for any moment, even when offline. DMusic comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in store or online to see how you can get DMusic today. 
Well, Jay, the digital NBA experience is over. Bermuda was represented by four youngsters. Three of them have returned. I got the opportunity to sit down and ask them about the experience and many other things that took place over in New York. Oh, well, it was, it was nice getting to play with people from the island, so kind of the same as playing back home, same culture and things like that. So we got along really well. It was just nice to play basketball. Mm. And Sinead, you were a, a, a member of a five women group. <laughs> What was that experience like with, with the two others, for, or the four others from the other two countries? Um, it was real good to get to like really know these girls and to know their strengths and weaknesses. And the one thing we all, obviously we all had in common is that we did like the share of basketball. See. Yeah, so it was easy to get along that way. Jarrell? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was cool because we got to see an NBA game that I really enjoyed. And it was also fun getting like to learn from people that actually work with NBA players is pretty cool. What would you say would have been the biggest challenge for any one of you um, outside of the cold and all that basketball related? What was your biggest challenge? And we'll start with you. Um, probably having to like deal with my back pains that I was like going through during like the second day of training. Was that because of the level of training you got the first day, or you had weather related, or no? It just started hard, and like when we went, when we was like in the lobby area, thing. And what 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 eventually happened for it to get better, or did it get? Better? I had to I had to put ice and my liniment on my back to like make it like not hurt as much as it was the day before my game. Right. And how did you mentally get over that? Because that's a physical challenge, but how do you mentally get through what you're there for and that's to, to get the experience? I try not to like think about it as much as it would, as it like physically hurt my back. Mm -hmm. What about you, Brian? What was your what would you consider your biggest challenge? Um trying to gel with the other players because we only had two days of training for like two hours each, so we had to kind of figure out what the strengths and weaknesses were each other. Yeah. So how does one, how does one, or how did you kind of adapt to that, trying to make sure that um, you can compete? Um, just later on in the game, we just got it together and we just knew what we had to do. Right. right. And what about you? Um, probably being consistent from as soon as you go. So like as soon as you get on the court, just be consistent and be smart with your plays. And probably switching between like, because we had like a lot of fun on the trip, so switching between having fun and then taking it serious when it was time to play. Because you all went, um, were selected out of Bermuda, and then you go to the, the what we call uh, a mini camp to be then selected for this experience, what, what were some of the things you had to, or you decided you had to work on knowing that the last hurdle, which was the one you just finished, was going to be that much more fun, that much more easier to accomplish what you want to accomplish and get out of it, an opportunity to, to be around Caribbean players in an NBA setting. Um, how did you think you had to put yourself in that position? So we'll start with you, Joe. Um, well, after the Bermuda camp, I decided I had to work a lot harder because during Bermuda camp I didn't play that well. Mm -hmm. So I decided I had to work a lot harder to get my game up. And what were some of the things you've done to ensure that, that you were getting your game up? Um, just trained every afternoon after school and then wait go weight room sometimes. Mm -hmm. What what would you consider your strength? Um going to the basket yeah. and passing. Okay. And for you? Um, well after the BVI trip I did a lot of morning training with um, one of my friends from Cedar Bridge. Mm -hmm. And we went to Lake Barkley like twice a week, five in the morning and worked out and stuff like that. And then um my strength is probably uh, being able to control the game from a point guard standpoint and like sharing the ball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, after the Bermuda one and the BVO, I had to like do like a lot of meditating to like calm my nerves down. <laughs> so. But you don't show it when you're out there. You don't show it. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not there, you don't show it. Yeah. I have to really meditate to like calm myself. No, you you're you're 
multi talented in, in, in games with or sports with that have balls in it. You play a lot of netball as well, right? Mm -hmm. What's the difference shooting mentally between the two sports? Um, in basketball, you really have to like at least be squared at some point to the basket. And netball, obviously, there's no backboard for you to like help the ball go inside the net. Yeah. So it's probably good. it'll probably be a lot a lot harder in netball than basketball is. So would you say your experience at netball has helped you in your basketball? Yes. Mm. Okay. Now you all got an opportunity to go and see. I'm not mistaken, the, the Knicks and Cavaliers? Yeah. yeah. Right. Outside of the excitement of being at an NBA game, were you all watching what they were doing, warming up, um, what they do, um, timeouts, and what are some of the things that you, you picked up from the professionals that you don't, that you normally don't do when you're playing? Hit the bottle. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Some of the players, uh, since they were up by so much, they were flipping the bottle on the court. Like LeBron James and those guys, they were doing the bottle flip challenge. Oh. That's kind of funny. <laughs> well, I'm talking about the game. Yeah, because they, they kind of do the mix of yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they were. We, we saw um, Kyrie Irving walk, warming up, mm -hmm. and he was locked in from the moment he stepped on the court, so. Even if he didn't have anyone to warm up with, he was doing his own thing. He was running the length of the court back and forth, getting shots up, and getting ready for. He was taking. He was doing stuff at game speed that he would be doing in the game. And that's something that you you don't normally do yourself. Um. Well, something that I don't do myself. Probably get to the gym early before games. Right. So he was. Well, he was locked in. Like no one was bothering. Mm -hmm. What did you pick up? Just going to court. Just going to the basketball court on time to like at least have so I can have time to practice my drills and stuff before the game starts. Other than bottle challenge, <laughs> <laughs> um, just see how well they were doing what they're supposed to do. Like they knew what they had to do. Mm -hmm. They didn't just go around and just do dumb stuff. They right. did a specific task and accomplished it. The one thing that you notice is that they're professional, so that's all they do. How does how does how what was the message for you guys doing getting the experience you got, knowing that you're still in school, so you have to learn how to juggle schoolwork, basketball training, or anything else that you're involved in. What were some of the coaches trying to get across to you? How do you manage that stuff? Having the right mentality, so knowing how to balance your time, knowing when when's a good time to train, when's a good time to do schoolwork. And just having the dedication to the sport, but also having the dedication to school as well. Okay. Did you did you feel you picked up anything extra from people you you got to meet or coaches? What are some of the small things you picked up about your game that you can now add to your game back here in Bermuda? Determination. Because mm. they were like. You may not be the best, but you can work harder than everyone else to try to be the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you translate that back to Bermuda? Instead of going around and just playing around, I could actually try to do something all the time instead mm -hmm. of joking around with my friends. Right. Game speed, how important is that? You said you watch Kyrie Irving warm up at game speed. How much of game speed training do you think they do? And what do you think you're going to need to do to try to emulate that? Um, well, they everything was fast for them, so mm -hmm. probably just mostly my shooting at gain speed. So when I'm in practice, like be fast and get open and try to emulate what would be what would really be happening in the game. Mm -hmm. Some, uh, when I go to professional sports, I always go early because I like to see how they prepare. And some players have a number of shots they put out before a game. Whether they go in or not, they just want to get in position, get these shots off, get it, get the blood flowing and so forth. What are some of the things you can say you were doing that the people that you were with weren't doing to improve your game? Anyone? 
expert to our management anyway. Right. Cause in, well, I'm speaking for myself right now. Right. Cause in school when we have like league coming up for school, none of the girls, well, none of us are on time for the court, so we really don't have enough time to like practice, to practice our shooting and our dribbling. So I'll say, I'll say time management. So earlier we were talking, you said you, you're a morning person, so you like to be up. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's one way you could start to look to um, get that moving, get be at the court early, get those shots in. But it's one of those things where you might be lonely doing it because people need to see your improvement uh, and then say, oh well, I need to start doing it because if you try to bring along three other people that say, oh, you know, I don't feel like doing that, but if they see you scoring points from different various places on the court and your game's improving, but they're not, you can say, well, I get here early to practice or to warm up or to do whatever needs to be done. Yeah? So you come back. What do you plan to implement for your teammates now in the league? Because um, remember, you're, 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 you play for the... Cedar Ridge. Yeah. And outside of Cedar Ridge, you need to Sky Force. Sky Force. Okay, so you have a mixture of players, young and old, yeah? So what's one of the things you learned on this trip that you could bring back and help your help your team become a better cohesive group? To hold each other accountable and try to get them to do what I do and they do the same thing, try to get us both better. Mm -hmm. And one of the people. Who do you play for outside of uh, Thundercats and MSA. Okay. So you have you have quite a bit of experience and youth in your team. Yes. Yes. Right. So, what are you? What are you hoping you can bring to to unify that group? Probably show that you can still be impactful to, towards the game without the ball. So, like setting up other teammates, getting them open for shots, even if you don't have the ball. So, there's still a way to be involved in the game. Okay. And outside of school, or are you just playing in school? Um, in school right now. Right. No good again. <laughs> no. Okay. So how do you plan to you or utilize what you've picked up for your school team? Um, by probably more communication and to be more open minded to how other people play and what the weaknesses and strengths are during this sport. When you play now netball you are a shooter. Mm -hmm. When you play basketball, what position are you are you normally in? Um, post. But I normally play wherever my coach that supports me, so right. Change up a, a variable against competition, or yeah. yeah, yeah. Where do you like to play? Post. <laughs> what about you? Where do you like to play? Point guard. Okay. You like to have the ball a lot. Okay. Selfish. Sometimes. Ah, <laughs> those point guards will tell you they have to be selfish. Not sometimes. It's all the time <laughs> selfish because you have to either create the shot for you or create it for someone else. So. What would you, what, what, what do you, what do you mm -hmm. like to play? Point guard. Okay. Number one. You give it up a lot? So you, you're, you're dishing off to um, Crumplin and those fellas, right? Yeah. So, they got to give it up sometimes. Yeah. But they encourage you, when you're playing with guys like that, they encourage you to shoot? Yeah, we have a whole different way to like our team this year. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of the pushing of the ball. Right. And we young guys on the team, we push the ball against the older guys. Right. They get the game speed up. Right. Now, when you two guys meet each other, um, obviously, it's a hype challenge. <laughs> what are some of the tactics you learned on this last trip that you could use against him? Because you both will have the ball against each other. You don't want to give away any secret. <laughs> no? Okay. Do you know when you guys meet again? It's early January, I think. Yeah, in the new year. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I think I have to come and pay a visit to that <laughs> one and see what you guys are putting down. Well, thank you very much. Um, all the best. What is next? What is next for you in the sport of basketball? I'm going to go for college. Okay. All right. Okay. College team. Okay. Well, I'm just going to try to stay fit for now and work on my skills. Right. Like, 
at least four or five times a week for like the next season. And then, yeah, we'll see where that takes me. By the time we're here. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thanks a lot. All the best. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free with D Music, exclusively from Digicel. With D Music, you can stream and download songs and create playlists of your favorite artists to fit your lifestyle. Whether you're working out at the gym, getting ready for a Friday night, or just chilling at home, D Music comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in store or online to see how you can get D Music today. Well, we've come to the end of another Digital Sports Show, Jay. Big weekend coming up in sports. Um, we want to say uh, we stand with you, Andrew, David, and the others who feel as if they, they can't come out, come out. We'll be able to support, and there are plenty others that will be looking to support and lend you all that you need to get over a tough period. But um, looking at Andrew, uh, listening to him, listening to David over the years, um, it's one of those things that once it's out there, it can help start the healing process for you, the individual. So for me, Andy, we'll see you next show.